We'll never know just how many people gathered on Tax Day 2009 at Veterans Park in Manchester. Estimates range from just over 1,000 to perhaps 3,000 at its peak. No one knew how many people were there because no one had ever seen anything quite like it before. 2,500 similar events took place across the country, and Manchester's Tea Party was the largest in New Hampshire. Mike Biondo of the New Hampshire Advantage Coalition organized the event. I think you got a lot of people upset right now with their with the government, and I think it's just great that they're coming out and expressing themselves in this matter. You know, we want them to come away, not just to get involved in this event. We want them to get away, come away with actually doing something afterwards, getting involved in their government, telling their politicians that they're spending too much, and they're uh, they're bankrupting our future. The crowd was full of Republican and independent activists and a few Democrats, but the real draw were people who'd never come out to a political rally before like the Haas family from Concord. We are very tired of the government's overspending, their pork barrel spending, and we want it to stop. And what brings you out here for the Tea Party today? The same reason. We want it to stop. We've had it paying for their overexpenditures. Yep. And I don't want to be paying back in debt that they owe. Manchester Mayor Frank Ginta fired up the crowd with a rousing attack on state and federal spending. Ginta recently announced he won't seek re-election this fall and will seek higher office in 2010. But the Manchester Republican said this Tea Party was less about the next election than it was about sending a message to current lawmakers. This is America. This is grassroots effort at its finest. You all should be congratulated for standing up for your values, your rights, and the responsibility that we all have as Americans to tell our leaders, stop spending our money. It is not easy to stand alone in the fight against liberals. But that is why we here today pledge our allegiance not just to this country, not just to this state, not just to stop spending that's gone amok, but to ensure our allegiance to each and every taxpayer today and every, each, every future taxpayer tomorrow, the little children that you see here today. Those are the people that we are fighting for. Those are the principles that we stand up for. Now this fight doesn't end today, it only begins today. All across our beautiful country, all across the lands today, people just like you and I stood together, took time off from work, took time from their families to come and stand together to send a strong message that we have already had enough. We have had enough of the spending. We have had enough of the misuse of our funds and we will not lay down anymore. We will stand together today, tomorrow, and each and every day until we put new people into office who respect our money, respect our wallets, and respect our future taxpayers. Everybody is so excited here. They, they really finally feel that there is a calling that gets all of us out and focused on a very unified approach, which is uh, strengthening our government by limiting our government. And you're seeing it everywhere you go, not just here, but at all the rallies throughout the state and the country. Just hours before the IRS deadline, taxes were on people's minds, but so was the debt that future generations would be forced to pay back if current budget trends continue. The government is spending my grandchildren's money, and we cannot support this uh, nine trillion plus, it will be. Uh, uh, huge debt that we're going to have. The country just cannot support it, so we're going to go bankrupt. Right. We, we've worked hard in our own personal lives to reduce our debt. Yeah. Uh, we're living debt free, and you know the government needs to take a more initiative and listen to its uh, people. The, the government doesn't listen to its people anymore. And I definitely don't want to end up like France or Europe. It's not being represented here, mostly in uh, almost. And everything, uh, well, taxation, of course, but uh, the bailouts, the stimulus package, uh, things that I didn't support, and I, I just feel that there are many of us that didn't support it, and yet these things went through anyway, and we're going to be paying for it. I have 21 grandchildren, 
and they're going to be paying for it. So I have a vested interest for sure. Franklin Mayor Ken Merrifield was invited to speak about the local tax cap effort, which he says is protecting taxpayers in his city. But he's worried about plans at the state house to cut revenue sharing with every town in New Hampshire. It's a grave concern. I can tell you in the case of Franklin, uh, unless something changes, it looks like we're going to lose about $138,000 in revenue. For us, that's a big number. It's not, it's not a big number to some other communities, but we're the smallest city in the state, and that's really going to matter to us. Josiah Bartlett Center President Charlie Arlinghouse says budget writers at the State House haven't made the same tough choices that local families are facing. We're in the middle of a recession. It's this horrible situation we're in. So let's increase spending 11%. Because at home, we're all increasing our spending 11%, right? Yeah. Oh, Anybody yeah. here? Um, and since nobody has any money, let's increase spending. It's actually more than a billion dollars that they've increased spending. So, you know, God knows where they're going to get that from. Well, they figure out a way, right? They're going to cut, they're going to raise some taxes here and there. We're going to take a big, a big credit card payment that we're getting from the federal government. Obama's going to loan us the money for a couple of years. We're going to pretend to balance the budget. In addition to that, since it's a recession, does anybody think it's a good idea to raise taxes in a recession? No! no. Does anybody think it's a dumb idea? Yeah! Dumb, dumb, dumb. But they haven't figured that out in Concord yet. So what they're going to do is, because tourism is a big part of our economy, they're going to raise taxes on tourism. Because God knows we don't want any more of that, right? So <clears throat> because we attract people to come here because we have a good business climate, let's stop that too. So let's pass a capital gains tax and push that through the house. In addition to that, let's not actually balance the budget. Uh, the amount of money we spend and the amount of money we raise don't match. There's a huge gap, but they paper it over with one-time money um, from the federal government, mostly. All that really means, it's like you, when you got a crack in your foundation, you put a piece of wallpaper over it. Um, <clears throat> that's great to help you sell your house this year, but the people who buy the house next year get screwed. And that's what we're doing to the people, to the generations coming behind us at the state level. 1,000, 2,000, perhaps 3,000 people on a sunny spring evening in Manchester for a tea party. Biondo says he's thrilled at the turnout, and what he sees is a new wave of financial responsibility in American politics. We didn't do any advertising for this event, and all of it was just emails and uh, you know web marketing, and it's just taken off. This is very viral. This is not just a Republican thing. People are upset right now, and I think it's, it's great that they're coming out together. It's great that they, they feel like they need to say something. I just hope they come away from this to actually get involved in their local communities, get a lot involved calling Carol Shea Porter and uh, Paul Hodes, and really start getting involved in their government because we can take things back. For the Josiah Bartlett Center for Public Policy, Grant Bossy reporting.